All right. Continuing on our previous talk on using enzyme matrix values in diet formulation, today I'm going to talk a little bit uh, more deeply about, uh, you know, some robust ways to use uh, that matrix value in feed formulation. I mean, at the first glance, it seems simple, but if you want to be more accurate about feed formulation, maybe you need to dive more deeply into this topic. So let's get started. Criticism around using enzyme matrix values in animal feed formulation. In my previous talk, I explained recalculation of nutrient requirements when adding enzyme in a diet. I explained how you need to calculate the provided amount of nutrients as a result of an enzyme based on its matrix value. And then I talked about recalculating the nutrient requirements after adding enzyme. It means that we just took away the amount of nutrients provided by the enzyme from the nutrient requirements of the animal. And we got the new requirements, which we need to balance our diet based on uh, these new recalculated nutrient requirements, right? As I said, at the first glance, it seems simple, but there are some uh, considerations that we need to take into account. So there are some criticism around using enzyme matrix value. The first one is considering the synergetic effects of various enzymes in a diet, or we call it enzyme additivity issues. What does it mean? It means that when you are using a multi-enzyme, it contains, you know, various enzymes like amylase, protease, lipase, beta-glucanase, arabinoxylenase, phytase. Now, they can affect each other's effect on nutrient digestion and absorption. It means that they can affect each other's matrix value in the diet. Let's say if you are using a single enzyme like phytase, yeah, it might liberate phosphorus, some amino acids, energy based on its matrix value. But if you are going to add another enzyme, or if you are going to use this phytase in a multi-enzyme combination, maybe that matrix value will be a little bit different. So that's why we need to use matrix values a little bit more cautiously. The second criticism is around the response of birds to the enzymes. The response of birds is dose dependent and usually it's nonlinear. It means that their response is not linear, is not like, you know, you feed 100 grams of enzyme or I don't know, 200 grams of enzyme and it's going to liberate this much of energy, this much of protein. If you are adding more enzymes, again, it's going to increase the level of, you know, liberation. No, it's not like that. It is nonlinear and we need to take it into consideration. It means that when we are going to balance the diet, we need to use some nonlinear methods that I have lots of talks and videos about nonlinear feed formulation on my channel. And if you like, you can just uh, watch those videos. I'll try to post some up here. 
Another consideration is some factors that can affect enzyme efficacy in a diet, like bird's age. Dietary anti-nutrients, disease, environmental conditions. When I'm talking about bird's age, it means that um, the matrix value that you are going to use in your diet formulation can be, you know, can vary depends on the bird's age. In one of my previous videos, I talked about using, you know, pre-starter diets, super pre-starter diets, and I explained some limitations around using some ingredients like fat. In a starter diet or a pre-starter diet, the maximum amount of fat that you can use in the diet is around 1%. But what about if you are adding an enzyme like lipase? What about if you are going to add an emulsifier? In that case, you can go a little bit high and you can go to 1.5% maybe about using fats in the diet. So it means that for each age, you are going to use matrix value, but be careful. Maybe that matrix value is different for a starter diet than for a finisher diet. Because in finisher diet, you know, the bird is already uh, have has a mature gut and by itself it can digest and absorb the nutrients very well. But in a pre-starter diet, the story is different, right? Or when you are using dietary uh, anti-nutrients, I mean, not using dietary anti-nutrients, you are using some ingredients that contain dietary anti-nutrients. In that case, maybe it can decrease the efficacy of enzyme. And you need to pay attention to this. Or in the case of disease, again, you know, some disease uh, can affect the gut performance in digestion and absorption. And some environmental conditions like uh, temperature, barn temperature beyond the comfort zone. In that case, you need to be more careful about using those matrix values. So in conclusion, try to use a nonlinear feed formulation method when you are using enzyme in a diet, which is really important, number one. Number two, pay specific attention to the factors that might affect the efficacy of an enzyme that I talked about that. And finally, evaluate the economic value of commercial enzymes. It means that you need to calculate the maximum price that you are going to spend on an enzyme. There is a way to calculate that, and I'll talk about that in my next video. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.